Is it recording on your part? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Hi, everyone. Welcome. We're gonna, welcome. We're gonna take a few minutes to five max and give everyone some time to join. So if you don't mind, we'll wait a little bit. I love the Frida Kahlo here. Yeah. It's one of my favorite artists. Yeah, she's amazing. Have you mm -hmm. um have you been to Mexico at all? Unfortunately not. I wish. I I probably will, hopefully soon. I do want to go to South America so bad. Colombia as well. Mm. Yeah. That would her. be really cool. Yeah, South America is amazing. I haven't been to um Mexico before actually, but I have friends who just moved there. Oh really? My coworkers are there and our founder of the company I work for all lives there as well. Um it seems like a great place, honestly. I mean, you know, Colombia is Colombia and their political uh things are another story, but it's so beautiful. It just looks amazing and fun. Yeah, definitely. We'll give it another three minutes and we can start. Is that okay with you, Paz? Yeah, of course. Okay. So I'm going to start some icebreakers, guys. And um, if you feel comfortable, definitely um, answer uh, to the questions of this of these polls. Uh, it's really going to help us a lot. Um, it's going to help Paz as well. Um, so there's only three. Um, so I'm going to give it about a minute and a half per poll to give everyone time to think about it and answer. Here's the first one. Welcome, Nadia. Welcome. That's okay, Edwin. Not a problem. Here's the first poll. Let me know if you see it. I'm not sure I do see it on my end, but I'm not sure if you guys do. Awesome. Maddie is on the low energy side today. I guess it's pretty late over there, wherever you are. Oh no, oh my gosh, I'm sorry. Ah, uh, yeah, I bet it's pretty rough. Thank you. Okay, we'll get the next one.
you can definitely write in the chat if you can. Um, what the, the brands you work for or companies you work for as a community manager events or whichever position you are in right now. Yeah, I'm that elusive other box. Mm, Co-founder, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, when you're a founder <laughs> of a business. That's a good one. We should add that next time. And you answered other. Would you mind telling us what you do? Hi, sorry, can you hear me okay? Yes. So first time using uh, Butter, so I'm just trying to figure out how to put my video on. It's my um, first time too, so don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. Um, I, I run a, a startup in the community space. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. What's the startup? Um, I actually, I actually reached out to you recently, Paz. It's a, uh, it's an application for communities. It's a mobile application called Your Kind. Oh yes, I thought it was that Andrew Robinson. <laughs> I was like, which startup? Yeah, I love Your yeah. Kind. Very exciting. Cheers, thank you. Yeah, it's exciting times getting there. Very cool. Oh, thanks for joining. Cheers. And number three, and we can start. Well, since I see everyone answered uh, this one. So before I end this poll and we start on the next one, which is Paz uh, starting her great, great um, deck that I've seen, and it looks freaking awesome. Um, I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Alexandra Thomas. I am a head of community uh, for Kachava. If any of you guys live in the US or Germany, you might have heard of Kachava. It's uh, similar to Huel, if you've ever heard of Huel. Um, but yeah, that's uh, pretty much what I do. Um, and I am super excited to be here. This is my first time hosting uh, an event and first time using Butter. Um, so kind of anxious, but kind of also excited. And let's see what this day brings. Uh, with uh, Paz, who will tell you all about what she does and um, how to build a sustainable ambassadorship program. So, Paz, you go ahead and take over. Awesome. Thank you so much, Alex. First time using Butter, first time hosting. Love that. Thrown in the <laughs> deep end. Um, well, um, thank you so much for that lovely intro, Alex, and awesome icebreaker questions. It's cool to get a bit of a snapshot on the room. Um, as Alex said, my name is Paz Pazarski. I'm the co-founder of the Community Collective, and we are the leading community for community builders in the Australian and New Zealand startup space. And cool to see a couple members here as well from our community and a couple of people from Australia tuning in, which is really nice. And really, you know, the purpose of today is to make sure that you feel fully equipped 
if you would like to go down the path of building an ambassador program to honestly supercharge and build a very highly engaged community. We actually have uh, an ambassador from a previous program I ran on the call here, which is Nadia from back in our RMIT Activated days. I'm pretty sure that there's a photo of you on a slide here somewhere, um, which is pretty cool. And you know, before um, before I start, I, I also just wanted to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land uh, that I'm tuning in from today. If you don't know what an acknowledgement of country is, this is a practice that we have in Australia to pay our respects to the Indigenous elders of the land in which I'm tuning in from. So I'd also love to extend that respect to wherever you are tuning in from as well today. And how today is going to work. So we're going to start with another check-in. Uh, this is a ritual that we have at the Community Collective, so I'll give you a bit of a taste of that. I'm then going to dive into my story and why the hell am I standing up here talking to you? What right do I have and what, what has been my community journey to date? Then we're going to dive in. I'm going to give you a roadmap of actually how to launch a new ambassador program. I've taken over 10 companies through roadmaps of how to build ambassador programs from scratch, and I've also built three myself. So I'm going to give you um, that blueprint today as well. And we're going to dive into the detail of like, actually, how do you identify on board and motivate ambassadors? And then what are the metrics? You know, how do you actually measure, measure success? How do we know what we're doing is actually worthwhile? And then I'm going to give you some uh, just three key strategies to take away uh, to ensure that you're building long term success. So this is an interactive uh, session. I'm so glad Francisco, uh, the founder of Live by Community is here as well. And uh, really, you know, I'd love for you to be sharing things in the chat. Um, we're going to have a Q&A at the end. So in Butter, you can use the Q function on the left here. You can click, I have a question. I would love for you to jump up on the main stage, ask a question live, um, practice your public speaking skills. Or if you're in the car driving, like I think someone here is today, uh, feel free to just post a question in the chat and uh, we can answer it that way as well. And then we're gonna celebrate because we've all taken time out of our day to actually commit to learning and progressing in our professional roles as well. So what is a check-in? So similar to an icebreaker that we did at the start here, uh, we have a ritual at the Community Collective where a check-in is a way to give everyone a voice at the start of the session and get a bit of a read on the room. So for today's check-in, I'd love for you to just post in the chat a yes or a no. Do you actually have an ambassador program right now? If you just post a yes or a no in the chat and let's just get an understand. Okay, so Maddie's got an ambassador program at the moment. So does Jen, just launched a few weeks ago. Absolutely love that, Jen, that's amazing. And then we have got a few no's as well. Oh, hey, Edwin, so glad to hear. Uh, not yet. Okay, Andrew's thinking about one. All right, this is good timing for you. Okay, great. And then uh, second question, are you thinking about launching one? So for the people that said no, are you thinking about launching one? Francisco's thinking about launching one. Okay, Nadia is, Greg is. Okay, Andrew Robertson is. Okay, this is exciting, led by community ambassadors. Uh, we'll start a wave there, Francisco. Okay, that's um, that's really exciting. Okay, and then last question. I'd love for you to actually just think for 30 seconds. We're just gonna take 30 seconds. And I'd love you to think, what does a successful ambassador program look like? Don't post in the chat, just have a think. You know, what does success look like? If you had launched that, you know, you're like four months into the program, it's going so well, you feel fantastic. Like what what does that what does that look and feel like? You know, take a deep breath in and out. And just yeah, really think about what that success looks like. And now I would love if one person could jump off mute and actually share what success looks like to them. Do we have any brave soldiers? You can just unmute and share your answer of success. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Um, hi. Uh, so I think success to me would look like um, getting help to run programs. So it's not all the burden on me and um, that the members are active um, in promoting and helping to run parts of the program. Love it. Love it. Thank you, Nadia, for jumping up on the main stage. Uh, I, I hear you. You know, it's that, that assistance, you know, helping with the team. You're like helping 
running the programs, they're out there actioning items and and really representing uh, what you're trying to achieve. So I love that. Do we have one more person that would like to share their definition of success? Uh, sure, yeah, I'll go. I'm Greg. Um, thanks for the opportunity uh, in general here. This is cool. Um, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, just individuals taking more ownership and thriving on it and enjoying it is is really uh, how I think success is laid out in my mind. And and then just the prol proliferation of events um, and, and being kind of catalyst around the world, I think is really uh, how I see it. Wow, I love that, Greg. Thank you for sharing it. Catalysts around the world. That's punchy. And you made a really good point there of, of enjoyment, you know? Yeah, like they, they also get value. Of course, ambassadors have a role to play. They have responsibilities. But we want to make sure that they gain value from actually, you know, being an ambassador and being in the team. Last opportunity. Does anyone else want to share their definition of success and throw it into the ring? Sure, I, I, I can quickly go. Um, I think I think along a similar wave, wavelength whereby there's enough value for both the ambassadors and those that they're bringing onto the platform um, that we as the kind of project founders can just steer the ship whilst they build the communities and build the environment so we don't have to consistently be actively involved in that process. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, Andrew, for jumping up on the main stage. Yeah, I really love that. You know, it's um, making sure that you are actually involving people to build community alongside you, you know, like what a better way to build community than involve the actual members of the community who live and breathe it every day. So, okay, all right. Well, we've got our definition of success. So now I'd actually, you know, and that's why I'm really here today to actually help you realize this dream of success and it totally is possible and so why am i on this stage i want to just actually start by sharing a little bit about my story my background give you a bit of context um, as well so my first experience in a community happened when i was four years old this is me on the left uh little paz playing guitar uh, in Melbourne, I'm based in Australia, and I joined a community uh, called the Suzuki Classical Guitarists Community. Now, this is a worldwide community. Suzuki is a Dr. Suzuki is from Japan. It is a method of learning a classical instrument. And I started when I was four and have been playing classical guitar for over oh God, maybe like 22 years uh, for the majority of my life. And Really, uh, this has been my 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 backbone and support while whilst growing up. You know, we would have um, weekly ensemble classes. I would have um, uh, guitar lessons with my teacher every single day. I'd get up at six a.m. and practice for an hour every single morning for over eighteen years. We would have huge conferences for all classical guitarists in the Sydney Opera House, Japan, America. We went to Connecticut. Don't even like I don't know anyone else who'd been to America as their first place and Italy and we would catch up all around the world and we would and we would share stories about how we've learned guitar what songs we're doing we'd share our challenges on actually how hard it can be and this was really my first taste and it's been a part of my life for a very long time and like many community builders, I have naturally gravitated towards connecting people. And for my professional career, you know, I've spent the past seven years actually at the intersection of building startups, so helping people build businesses from scratch, and then building communities. So I've been a community manager for mainly a startup community for over five different organizations. The first one was a not-for-profit called Sister Works in Melbourne, and we supported asylum seekers to happily settle in Australia and become financially independent. We would help these women uh, actually create their own businesses from scratch in Melbourne because all of their qualifications were deemed irrelevant. You know, these are lawyers, dentists, doctors. They were smarter than me. And, you know, they could not get a job because they went from this country. And that's really tough. So we connected them. It was in person. It was intimate. We had brand advocates and it was truly, truly powerful. 
And from there, I joined RMIT Activator, which is a university in Melbourne. And so this huge university wanted to launch a innovation department and run an accelerator program. And really, RMIT Activator is the heart of entrepreneurship at RMIT University. And so I joined when they had just opened the space. It was three-level co-working space. This is obviously post pre-COVID times, and we would run, uh, I ran over 12 Launch Hub Accelerator programs. We would do three a year, which I wouldn't recommend to anyone because they're 12 weeks long. <laughs> and, you know, and we built an ambassador program there. And we had uh, Nadia, as I said, was an ambassador at RMIT Activator. We've got, uh, we had um, eight ambassadors in a year. They were four-month programs at a time. And really, this was supercharging the community. So, by the time I left, um, the community had grown from 500 to 5,000 members, and we had a really strong sense of connection, helping students, staff, and alumni build and launch businesses from scratch. From the university, I felt like I wanted to do more. I want, you know, why, why not constrict? Why constrict my ability to help people start businesses just to the university community? So I joined Startup Victoria, which is Australia's largest startup community. There's over 60,000 people in this community. And this community was founded in 2009. And I joined um, their community as the community manager in 2021 to really run their memberships. So we would help founders uh, from the stage of they just had an idea in the shower all the way up to businesses earning over a million dollars in annual reoccurring revenue. So we had intimate growth club dinners for some of the largest scale ups of Australia, like Canva, who gives a crap, Upbank, Linktree. We were catching up with these founders and, and helping them actually unpack their challenges together. I launched a ambassador program at Startup Victoria. We had two uh, ambassadors. This is Omar and Leigh, and they were community officers. That was their title. And we worked together for um, about, a, uh, I think it was like an 18 week um, ambassador program. But we ran events together. We launched new offerings. They were at pitch nights. They were like repping the brand, bringing in new people in. And they gave us direct insight into how we can better support our founders. Then enter a pandemic and life was tough. Melbourne was the most locked down city in the world. We did over 420 days in stage four lockdown where you could not leave your house. And it was absolutely ruthless. And when you're a community manager supporting a community of founders, whose typically businesses were either blowing up, like they were going so well that they couldn't keep up with the demand or they actually had to close shop and it was really tough. And so they lent on the communities and our the managers as ourselves for support. And I hit a point in my career where I um, actually had a mental breakdown. I was extremely anxious. I'd been in lockdown for like seven months. Uh, my housemates had moved out of our house. I was living alone, working full-time online and really struggling to pivot all of these uh, offerings online for founders. I did over 330 courtesy calls to businesses all around uh, in our community to understand their challenges. And, I've, and I really took on their problems as my own. And I started trying to look for support as a community manager. I was like, who else in Melbourne is running a community for startups in lockdown online? You know, I found great communities like CMX in America. I found Australian community managers in Australia, which were great. But there was nothing like super niche of the supporting the startups in Melbourne. And so um, we built our own community. And this is the inception of the Community Collective. So the Community Collective started as a meetup group for 17 community managers who were all struggling and really wanted support in building better startup communities in Australia. And after this meetup, uh, this this group of people wanted support monthly and uh, we grew exponentially around Australia and New Zealand very quickly and our meetup link on an air table went viral across the country and we now have over 480 members um, in our free meetup community who are all community managers building communities across the Australian New Zealand startup space. So all the time for the first year of this community, I was also working full time at Startup Vic still supporting founders and uh, this community wanted more. And uh, they wanted more support, more coaching, more mentoring. So I quit my job last year in July and launched a, uh, a community cohort program. It's like an accelerated program to build a community strategy. And we had 37 people go through the first one. And now we're going through the second one, which has 54 
uh, community managers going through it. And we have 290 on a wait list ready for the second one. I'm now a founder, working full time, uh, started paying myself in February, which is great. And now really looking at how do we actually su sustain this and build a financially sustainable community. And uh, I launched an ambassador program for the community collective last year. We had four ambassador programs for four months, and then we welcomed another four, and we've got 35 on the wait list for team number three. So these ambassadors have been absolutely integral in helping us build the community collective. They are running our monthly meetups. They are they launched a jobs board, which has brought over two thousand five hundred dollars in revenue um, for the community. And we helped hire three people in companies to land jobs. And so these ambassadors are really representing our community. And that is exactly why I want to help you launch a new ambassador program, because the effects of this is far reaching. You know, involving your members to build community alongside you is the most impactful and enjoyable way to build a sustainable community. So what is an ambassador? You know, we're talking about it quite a lot, but like, what is an ambassador? Like, let's make sure we're all on the same page. So an ambassador is a person who represents and speaks for a particular organization or group of people. In this context today, we're gonna to be talking about community ambassadors, so ambassadors that represent and help you build a strong community. So how do we build an ambassador program from scratch? You know, we've worked out what a successful one looks like, but what is the roadmap? So I wanna give you the eight key steps in building a uh, ambassador program from scratch, and we can set, share these slides um, afterwards as well, so you're not like rapidly taking notes. Um, so if you're thinking about building an ambassador program, I want you to start with why. Start with why. Simon Sinek, genius, you know, great book if you haven't read it. But start with why here. Like, what is the purpose of building an ambassador program? Do you even need one? You know, like, is that going to be the most valuable uh, place to spend your time? So, you know, before you're even going to launch it, just sense check yourself. And you need to ask yourself the questions is, are, are there people who are willing to be ambassadors? You know, is there like a strong sense of community that you kind of have the values underpinned, you know, you're at the right stage. And the right stage, I'd say for a community is you've already, you've got like a, a pretty good member base, you've, you've seen people uh, living and breathing the values, you know, there's a bit of traction going on, you know, it's, it's not the community doesn't exist right now, because it's really hard to then find your brand ambassadors and then train them into it. So I think that is the sweet spot. You can prove me wrong uh, and I'd love to hear about it, but I think that is the sweet spot. So once you've mapped out like the purpose and the why and you've realized, okay, we're at the right stage, we're ready to roll, I want you to build a strategy around uh, creating an ambassador program. You know, we, we want to create a plan, you know. So what are we trying to achieve? Like what are the goals? Like what do we actually want our ambassadors to be doing um how does this ambassador program level up to the um the vision and the mission of the community so you want to make sure it's it's very uh in line with what you're already trying to achieve so for example our mission at the community collective is to support community builders to build stronger communities and create a space where they belong and so i mapped an ambassador program i was like okay how is this going to achieve our mission well, we want to support community builders to build strong communities. Well, our ambassadors could help us give ideas for uh, the content that we share with them, the coaching that we offer them, uh, and the offerings that we build. And we want to create a space where, where they belong. All right. Well, ambassadors can welcome members in. They can make them feel like they are part of the community from day one. So that, that levels up to the mission for us. So that was a big tick. Number three, program design. You know, you don't want to just quickly launch a website application without a program in mind. So I want you to really write out uh, a thorough program design of like, what does it involve? What is the expectations? What are the dates? What are the timeframes? What is exactly going to be uh, the types of sessions um, that these ambassadors can expect? And just really, uh, you know, the involvement, um, like it's really core to actually outline Okay, like if you join our ambassador program, we expect you to commit two to four hours a week and we're going to have a weekly workshop and you have to be on Slack for one hour a week to do X, Y, Z. Um, to give you an example, um, here's the program design um, and outline of the role for the Community Collective's ambassador program in the chat there. 
Once you got the program, then you're going to outline the role. So what are the responsibilities? What are the key actions and roles of these ambassadors? You know, are they building events? Are they uh, writing social media copy? Are they uh, in charge of blogs? Is your ambassador program purely to build chapters all around the world and have people, you know, start new events in different cities is that is that the aim or you really want to double down on content you know actually i just want ambassadors to contribute to the amazing newsletters that we send out i want them to find great content i want them to be thought leaders and write blogs so really outlining and getting clear on that role and in the role you should also write you know who you're looking for you know you'll see in our example um in the link in the chat there we write out we are looking for someone who is organized who is community minded they are passionate they have the time to commit so you also want to explain who you who you're looking for. Recruitment. You can't have an ambassador program without ambassadors. How boring would that be? So you've got to make sure that you have a way and a process and a plan to actually go out and find the ambassador programs. You know, it's like launching a new offering. It's like getting it live on the website is part one. Part two is then marketing it. So think about how are you going to find these people? You know, do you have an existing community? Great, let's send it to our members. Do you have uh, social media channels? Do you have partners? Like where would your potential new ambassadors live? Like can you go and find them without being all stalkerish and creepy? But like, you know, go find them. Like where are they hanging out? What are they doing? And what is your plan to reach them? You know, recruitment is really active. Like when when we're recruiting, we we recruit um, twice a year for two weeks each at a time for our ambassador program. And I'm I'm on the phone. I'm I'm e I'm inviting people. I go through our database of 480 members, and I'm I'm hand picking out ambassadors. I'm inviting them to join the program. Like it's not just a couple social media posts. I'll just sit back and have a cocktail, and you know, like it's 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 very active. And then, all right, so you've got your people, you know, and in that recruitment stage, you know, work out if you, it, it has the application process. So you've got a written application. We do ours on Airtable. And then um, we would have a, uh, I would have a 20 minute one-on-one -on -one phone call um, with them. And then I'd put um, the final like top six candidates to the rest, to the existing team or our advisors or get a second opinion. And then um, I would offer the top four um roles and then we're on to onboarding onboarding so this is probably the most important part of this entire roadmap i really and i've got a whole section on onboarding on how to do this well um as well so you know you're really trying to set them up for success like what are the what is the information that these ambassadors need at the start so that they honestly can speak about your community better than you can you know a key question i ask in the interview process is how would you explain the community collective to someone? How would you explain the community collective to someone? You know, and in this answer, I'm seeing how they would explain it. And if they're like, yeah, yeah, the community collective is this like really cool um, bathtub. It's a really great bathtub. I'm like, what? Oh, you don't understand us at all. You just want this role. You know, or someone's like, oh, the community collective is community for community builders. You know, it helps with the challenges. It's all around Australia and New Zealand, really specialized in startup space, launched in 2021. I'm like, oh, okay, you've got a pretty good understanding. All right. That 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 sets the bar in the in the differentiation. So onboarding, you know, you want to have a the onboarding starts as soon as you make the offer, not when the program starts. It starts usually two weeks before the program starts. So I would have a one-on-one -on -one phone call. Um, I would I'd, I'd create a 30-page handbook with all the information about our business and the community that they could possibly need and, you know, making sure that they uh, can create uh, all, all the things that they want to in the next four months or however long the program is um, based on setting them up for success in the onboarding. So we'll unpack that a bit more soon. And then the second last part is execution. So, you know, the program's running now. Like what systems do we need for a high quality execution? What are the tech tools that the ambassador needs? What are the login details? Like this is probably where it takes up most of your time because you're training people. You know, it's like bringing on a new team member. You want to you want to um, uh, make sure that you're spending a lot of time in the recruitment and the hiring and the onboarding and making sure that they are set up for success and that really they have everything that they could possibly need. So whenever I give an ambassador a new, um, whenever an ambassador opts in to be involved in a project at the community collective 
uh, emphasis on that opt-in element, uh, I would then be like, great, amazing, so pumped to have you involved. Um, here is the how-to guide and an onboarding video. I would never give an, um, a project without a how-to guide and an onboarding video. And this saves us time. I, you know, I don't have to have like a 30 minute meeting. Then I have this evergreen resource forever in case I onboard another ambassador to do it later in the track. So you're really building out the system and processes here. Celebration, you know, you gotta have fun. You gotta celebrate the wins. You know, you gotta wrap the program with um, deep reflection Make sure you have time to reflect on, did we achieve what we set out to achieve? Uh, what did that look like? What was your experience? What did you enjoy? What did you not enjoy? And really understand uh, the experience of the ambassador before the program ends. This is before the program ends, you know? And then the end of the program, you want to celebrate, do something special, give thank you cards, a wrap-up video, you know, whatever that might be. And... You know, I think that in that celebration element, you're also talking about um, ongoing. So, yes, the ambassador program might have ended. But God, you've just invested a lot of time in this one person to bring them on the entire journey. So how can you now invite them to stay on as an ambassador, given that they have lived up to the role expectations? You know, I'm such a core believer of going deep with a small group of people than going far and beyond with thousands and thousands and scratching the surface for only like a couple weeks at a time, you know, I'd rather build a community alongside like four people for two years than like two weeks with a hundred. So in saying that, now we're going to look at identifying, onboarding and motivating ambassadors. So there's three key elements in the identification. So we're going back to that roadmap of like really this recruitment phase. We're going to unpack that a bit more. So with the identification, uh, there's six key elements that I look for um, for ambassadors. I look for connection. So are they connected to the vision and the mission of our team, of the community, of the business? I look at capacity. This is a huge one. So many people go, I want to be an ambassador and don't actually realize that, oh, shit, I don't have the time to commit. I don't have the time to do anything. I'm so sorry. I'm like, and their intentions are great, but you want to ask questions such as, what do your commitments look like for the next three months? Not do you have capacity for this role? Yes, of course, of course. No, you want to go, what are your plans for the next couple of months? You know, and they're like, oh, yeah, I'm going to um, Indonesia for five weeks and then uh, I'm working full time. I've got three other jobs on the side and I'm like building this new cooking school. And you're like, whoa, that sounds amazing. But where is this going to fit into your life? You know, like that's a that's a big one. Contribution. How many ambassadors join? Oh, sorry, this is um, – uh, type on that side. So contribution is can they uh what are they going to bring to this to the team? You know, what skills are they going to bring? How are they going to contribute? And honestly, are they actually the right fit for this role? Capable is also about their experience. So do they have experience in running events? Do they have experience in writing copy? You know, actually what um what value are they going to bring? Are they the best person suited for this role? You're going to look at character. You know, this person's going to be out there representing your community. They're going to be talking to people. They're going to be inviting new people to join. So do you trust them to represent exactly what you stand for? And then we're going to look at chemistry. You know, do you connect with this person? Do you, do you want to spend time with them? Like that that's a huge one, you know. This is, this is really personal. You're going to be with them, talking with them day in, day out, so you really want to make sure that you also um, get along, you know, and there's a vibe there. And, you know, for onboarding, you've really got to begin with the end in mind, which sounds super counterintuitive, but onboarding is really integral to three key elements. The first one being is thinking about, how to start, you know, what is the key information expectations um, that ambassadors need to know? So for onboarding, you know, I would give ambassadors a baseball card profile. So we call it a baseball card. Um, this is um, something that the Blackbird um, Ventures team do. So when you join, you submit questions such as what are my hobbies? What gives me energy? What drains my energy? How do I like to learn? And so we're making sure that everyone on the team understands everyone else's um, capabilities and interests so we can start and work well together. You're going to look at how to succeed. You know, how can ambas ambassadors make the most out of this role? Like what is, 
what does success look like for them? You know, you know, you got, got to really outline those expectations so so they know how to bring them best their best selves as well. And then, you know, how, how do ambassadors stop? You know, not everyone is going to be an ambassador for your community forever. So from in the onboarding, it's actually really key to outline what is the process for an ambassador to graduate? You know, maybe halfway through the program, they realize, oh, you know what, I've had like a tragedy in my life and I actually just can't show up here. You know, you want to make sure that actually ambassadors understand how to. So at the community collective, an ambassador ever needs to graduate from the role during the program. They just have to give us two weeks notice and then uh, we graduate them and then we have a whole offboarding process for them. So a couple um, examples of how we set up, um, this is snippets from our ambassador handbook. You know, we give them a full timeline of the program. So we go team number two, there's fortnightly whips. It's all about um, onboarding, team bonding. We do project selection. And then March, we do planning and we kick off all these projects. I do a one-on-one -on -one with everyone for half an hour to make sure that they feel equipped. April, um, that now the ambassadors are out in the world executing everything, may have another one-on-one. -on -one. And then June, no more projects, like winding down that execu execution. We're doing reflection, retrospectives and celebrations. Uh, I would give them clear outlines of some of the projects that they can get involved in. You know, a, like a lot of um, stereotypical um, ambassador programs would be, let's have a, like a lot of chapter hosts, um, have like 50 ambassadors to run events all around the world, which is a really successful program. You know, you look at um, Culture Amp and their People Geek community. You could you could go onto their website and become a chapter host right now. Notion have a fantastic um, uh, way to become you know, uh, basically a Notion advocate and run Notion events. You look at the Google I Am Remarkable community um, to run workshops about how to teach women and disadvantaged groups to talk about their achievements, you know. I Am Remarkable, I think, have over oh, like 50,000 facilitators in that ambassador program, you know. So, so you can go to scale. I like to go um, intimate, um, but really you'll just work out which program is the best for you. Um, then the last thing I'll show you is uh, the tech stack. So, you know, I'll give them an example of, you know, these are the tech tools that we use. We use Disco for our community portal, Butter for our events, and make sure that they have all the login details for that as well. An element on motivators, you know, once everyone's onboarded, they're in the program, how do you keep ambassadors motivated? Like what is the key there to actually keeping them engaged? So for motivators, um, one of the biggest things I've learned from running three different ambassador programs for three different communities is it's it's not about the responsibilities that the ambassadors have. It's about the goals that they are trying to achieve in their life. Every ambassador that joins, I say, where are you going? Where do you want to be in your career in two to three years? What are you trying to achieve just in your personal professional life you know like outside of this community like where are you going and if i can help the ambassadors achieve their own professional goals through our program and through giving them experience to run events champion other members like write content then i have done my job and that is a huge motivator you know i had an ambassador who wanted to be a thought leader in the community industry i was like okay great well um you know would you like to start writing some articles, you know, thought leaders actually are um, ed educators and they talk about things. So, you know, would you like to actually write articles about that? And they did that and launched a Coffee Corner article series and um, have really grown in that space. So another motivator is acknowledgement. You obviously want to um, give kudos and celebrate team members as well, asking them if they want to do that in person or in teams or publicly, and then also looking at rewards. So can you give books or journals or um, thank you cards or acknowledgement or speaking opportunities, you know, like what are the gated rewards for ambassadors to keep them long term? Now I'm conscious of time. So um, what we're going to do is I'm going to chat about a couple success metrics and then wrap up with the key, the six key strategies. And then I'd love to open it up to the floor for any questions. So if you've got any questions brewing, um, feel free to just jump into the queue and click, I have a question and we'll come to that very shortly. So how do you even know if you achieved what you set out to achieve? I wanna really give you some key elements of success here because 
He who fails to plan is planning to fail. Winston Churchill did a phenomenal job at really emphasizing the importance of a strategy. And so he spoke about that at the start, you know, strategy is key for the ambassador program. It's step number two on the roadmap, you know, it's really a plan of action designed to achieve long-term goals. So you want to really look at the success metrics and I've outlined three here to really understand whether your ambassador program was successful. So I would, at the end of a program, I'd look back to our strategy and I go, okay, to what extent has the team achieved uh, the strategy that we set out? You know, we have a business strategy at the Community Collective and ambassador responsibilities are lined up straight to that strategy. So I look at, okay, great. Do we hit our metrics? Do we get 30 new meetup members a month? Do we have an average of 40% cohort um, participants returning for the next program? Like, a, like I map it against um, those metrics. And then I look at the goals of the ambassadors. I get them to do a um, green, orange, red light system on the goals that they set at the start of the program. We do it midway and then we do it at the end. And I go, did you achieve your goals? If, if all the ambassadors had red marks on their own professional goals, I have failed. I have, uh, you know, they've, they've been out there probably achieving our goals, but I haven't helped them achieve theirs. And so I would, I would, I would be very sad with that ambassador program. Um, and then retention, you know, I love running repeat programs like I think having a core start date a core end date a break in between and then inviting ambassadors back to do the program again you know we've had um, our first ambassador program at the community collective we had an NPS of 100 and we had 100 percent of people renew so now team two is the same team we had in team one plus four new people and now we're uh, a month left and I'm now gonna start inviting all of them back to join team three again plus welcome four new ones so that retention is key, you know, you've invested so much time with them, keep them long-term. So speaking of long-term, I wanna leave you with these six key strategies to build long-term success. And then we're gonna to go to your questions. So I've spoken a lot about goals here, you know, and really the key takeaway for this is I wanna make sure that you have goals for your ambassador program and that you take time to let your ambassadors set their own goals. Three is enough, you only need three. But the, this will be the heartbeat of the program and then write them down somewhere. Like I have a ambassador profile with all of their goals and I keep looking back to them during the program. I'm like, oh yeah, what is, um, what's Kat trying to achieve? Oh yeah, she really loves content. Okay, how can I, how can I help her um, execute with more content? And you really wanna outline the expectations, you know, like, in our program, um, there is a non-negotiable to attend the fortnightly whip. We do an hour and we do a whip. Everyone gives updates on their projects. We kick off projects. We brainstorm challenges. We ask for help. Um, but really the expectation there is you have to attend, have to attend. Of course, if life comes up, totally get that. You know, if you're sick or anything happens, you know, take care of yourself. But then the expect expectation there is post in the Slack saying that you're unable to meet it you're unable to be there and then you are watching the recording. So ambassadors know straight away the expectations for the whole program because it can really start to uh, untangle a lot of things when you haven't set those expectations really clear at the start. Accountability, you know, once you've set those goals, you've set the expectations, you know, it's, it's really hard keeping people accountable to the goals, but that is your role. You know, if you are launching and running this ambassador program, it is up to you now to keep them accountable, to help them achieve their goals, to help them achieve the business and the community goals and ensure that the expectations are being met. So if I notice that ambassador just didn't rock up to whip and, you know, didn't actually explain why um, they didn't um, rock up, um, I would I would personally message them. I say, hey, you know, just checking in. Is everything all right? Notice you weren't at whip. Um, you know, the expectation was there that you just um, let us know. So in future, I would just love a, a message just beforehand. Or, you know, like someone says, I'm going to launch um, the jobs board on the 1st of June. I'm like, great. On the first, of, a week before the 1st of June, I'm like, hey, hey, going on this? You know, we, we lead it up to the timeline and, you know, deadlines and can always be shifted. But whenever you give a task, you give the how-to guide, you give the video and you give a deadline. Always give the date because if without the date, then it's so easy to be like, oh, great, we're going to do all these events and launch all these things and, and have so much fun. And then it's kind of like two months on, it's like, oh, wow, we're really busy. And when did we even say we'd do that? It's really then hard to 
keep anyone accountable if you didn't have a date because you're like, oh, we didn't actually, like I didn't set that expectation. So, oh, you know, that it's, um, it's a two-way street. All right, the fourth last strategy before Q&A is less is more. You know, this is a very biased approach that I have. Um, you know, as I said, I'd rather go deep with a small group of people um, than, than go pray and spray and, and go large and, and, and scale fast because as soon as you start, if, you, if your intention to, is to scale, you know, start small and get a couple ambassadors and then train those ambassadors to run the ambassador program, you know, and then they start recruiting more ambassadors and, and you go from there. But, you know, bringing 50 ambassadors on all, all at the start and not doing efficient training and then they're running events all over, you know, what if, what if then, you know, they're, they're running events and the experience wasn't up to scratch. Um, so you just want to make sure that you're really diligent and you're investing in the people. And if you do scale that you have the right, um, you know, expectations and onboarding to do that. Um, but yeah, I would, I would really just hone in that less is more on, on the ambassador front and build a team. You know, I've seen people, um, have communities where they just have one ambassador, which, which is great. You know, that is, that is less, um, but I would increase that by a little bit more because the team dynamic is, you know, you start, you know, ambassadors start joining and they're like, oh, wow, Stacey's doing like three blogs a, a week. Like, whoa, oh, oh, Damo's over there, like running a event in Tassie, like, okay, maybe, maybe I should run one. There's like this team, like morale, you know, and, and you start like growing together and you start helping each other. So I would always like bring on ambassadors at the same time to always like start four people at the same time. Um, and then graduate people at the same time, because there really is this like team dynamic. And then the last thing is retention. You know, that is the key takeaway from today. You know, once you've started someone as an ambassador, if they've lived up to those expectations, invite them back, you know, ask them. And if they're like, oh, I'm not really feeling it, you're like, hey, what would change your mind? What can I do? What are your, what are your goals? What are you trying to achieve? How can I help you get there? You know, I offer our ambassadors like one-on-one -on -one coaching um, in community building. And I'm like, every time I give them a public speaking opportunity, I give them a full brief the draft script and agenda. We do a test run, then we do the live, and then I give them feedback. I send a voice note at the end of every session the ambassador runs. I give them feedback um, to explain what they did well and then what could elevate it for the next time because I want them to grow. And when they feel that, you know, they stay long term and it's phenomenal. I feel like I'm building the community collective alongside eight incredible community builders, and I, you know, wouldn't want anything less. So just remember, alone we can do so little, together we can do so much. Thank you so much for having me. Um, if you would like to reach out and chat more about ambassador programs, I love talking about them. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn via Paz Pazarski. I'll pop the link in the chat. I also just launched a new newsletter yesterday uh, to write more about community building after 150 people voted on the name of my new newsletter. So I'll pop that in the chat for you as well. And yeah, if you're a community builder and you aren't a member of the community collective, I would love for you to join. So now we've got some time for some Q&A and yeah, I would love for anyone to jump up um, on the main stage, share a comment or a question and thank you so much. All right. Oh, let's just go straight into the Q and A. Nadia, you've got the stage. Hello. Thank you so much. That was so amazing. Uh, I've got so many tips and um, to take away. So thank you. Uh, my question would be: uh, What kind of rewards and incentives do you give to your ambassadors? This is such a great question. Thanks, Nadia. And I'm so glad you're here. You know, you're like an ambassador, community collective member, gone through the cohort. I'm a I love that. Um, so uh, we, we actually ran a 75 minute workshop on this exact question yesterday about engagement and rewards with Jenny Weigel um, from Jenny.community. And we had this question and one of the biggest things that came out from rewards is number one, um, rewards are different to whoever the people that you're dealing with. So yes, you could create a stack of 10 common rewards. Um, but if I was going to reward someone, I usually like to ask them, like, how do you like to be rewarded? 
what do you value? Someone's like, I love books. I'm like, okay, great. I'll think about education. Other people are like, I love public acknowledgement. People are like, don't talk about me in public ever. Never do that. Like I would feel so offended if you, you know, people, some people don't like that. So with rewards, always understand exactly what your members would appreciate. And then if you need some like actual ideas for rewards, um, some things that I've done in the past is I love writing personal cards. So I have like branded community collective cards, like yes, people handwritten cards and um, for like our, and for certain either like ambassadors, um, whenever I catch up with them in, in person, I'll um, write them a handwritten card uh, with their name on it in an envelope and I'll and I'll give that to them as like an acknowledgement of thanks. Um, also do like digital Canva cards for everyone's birthdays. So schedule them at the start of the ambassador program. They go out as digital cards. Um, rewards is also like tickets to events at the community collective where we've partnered on like Blackbird Sunrise and lots of like conferences around um, Australia and New Zealand. And so um, whenever we get free tickets uh, for something like ambassadors, like the first people that I would give them to, you know, like what is an experience? Um, introductions is a really good one as well as like a cost effective way to if you're on a budget, um, you know, some of the ambassadors are like, hey, I want to be like phenomenal facilitators. I'm like, cool. Well, like maybe um, at the time where you facilitated two events, I'll introduce you to this like facilitator coach for like half an hour with them. Um, so thinking of, yeah, some, there are like some ideas and we've done like books and eBooks and like content. I love giving like education or like journals, love giving like a hard copy journal. I'm sure you would have remembered the activator one you got, you know, and you like write in it about ambassador stuff. So I think they're really, um, monumental. Does that help Nadia? Yeah. Awesome. I'll share some links in the chat as well about some uh, articles and rewards. Um, Edwin, we've got a question here. Do you think an accelerator program can use with an ambassador program. Do you think the accelerator program can use with an ambassador program? It's a really good question. So yeah, when I think about accelerator programs, I think about obviously accelerated programs helping startup founders build great businesses and get support. I think an ambassador program is a great idea because typically accelerator programs are for founders and founders are typically time poor and usually you know it's really hard for founders because they they come to communities to get support but then you know we also want them spending all their time on the business you know we don't we don't want them just in the community being just great community members and never working on their business so it's like a catch 22 with startup communities um but we ran our like our ambassador program at RMIT activator which also supported our launch hub accelerator program so we had an ambassador program that was broader to the community and broader to like anyone in, interested in entrepreneurship but our ambassadors like specifically also helped in the launch hub accelerator so when there was the launch hub accelerator welcome drinks we had ambassadors there to like welcome people we would like co-design the event with them we, they were like ambassadors such great people to gain insights into actually how to build the community like it's literally the best research you can do because you're just spending time with your members like tenfold so if anything ambassadors can help you design the accelerator program they can help you um co-create the events and the experiences in the, in the accelerator program i would just think about it as um more broadly like can they help run events for like the broader company that would be really exciting or because the accelerated program is you know it's quite a small and niche like the projects within that could be quite um limited so yeah my answer is yes but i would look at how to have ambassadors um support them more broadly and edwin if you want to chat more about that just let me know and we can riff on that um okay we've got two minutes left um andrew over to you Hey, sorry, a uh, quick question, and this is uh, the old legal side of me coming out. Do you have any uh, formal agreements with ambassadors? Um, do you have them now or did you ever have them? Is that a industry standard thing? Yes, great question. I thought the exact same thing. I was like, how do we, can we do this? <laughs> like, what's, uh, what do I need to know about? So um, how you position it uh, is a, a free program. So it's, so you know we we launch it as a free program you know and we call our members of the program ambassadors and so we position it as of you know join this program 
you're going to do X, Y, Z. This is what involved. It's free for you. Uh, but in exchange, you know, I always think about how can we value ambassadors in that, like on a side note, we'd give every ambassador at the community collective, like a ticket to join our paid program for free. Um, but on the like legality side, so we have like a program terms and conditions. So for any program that you have, you should have terms and conditions. Ambassador program is the same. So we would have, um, I used um, like foundlegal.com, have a fantastic um, template for terms and conditions for programs. So I bought that template, took me about three annoying hours and some lo-fi music um, to update it and like write the terms and conditions. Uh, and then and then we also have community guidelines. So they're, they're like the two key documents you would need. So terms and conditions for the program, um, you know, IP, copyright, like privacy, if any disputes happen, like how would we deal with that? What's the legality of, of all of that? And then number two is the community guidelines. So how do members show up? And as a community, you should have community guidelines no matter what. Um, we actually built a template um, for community guidelines. I'll share that here because we had so many members ask, asked for it. Um, so if you need a template for community guidelines, we've got one there that you can um, download. And really the template for community guidelines is outlining like how, how do people show up? And if you um, didn't abide by these guidelines, um, what is the process? And then what like what would happen? So in our terms and conditions for ambassadors, it's like, you know, if you um, violate any of these terms and conditions, um, we can end your role, like stop your access to all of the like logins and tech tools and we'll change all the details and you'll graduate as an ambassador pro as an ambassador from the program. Yeah. So yeah, we so not really like positioning as this like volunteer, like free role, like free work, you know, it's not it, it's like this is a free program and this is the expectations, these are terms and conditions, these are the guidelines. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Cheers. Thank you. Sweet. No worries. Um I know it's 10 o'clock. I've got another five, 10 minutes to hang on. So Alex, are you, do you, are you fine if we run and do this last question? Yeah, I'm totally fine. Okay, Go great. Ahead. Okay, Greg, floor's yours. Oh, Greg, you're on mute. Cool. Um, no worries. Thanks, thanks Nadia. Bye. Uh, yeah, thank you so much, by the way. I really appreciate this. Um, so the Community Collective uh, basically enables community builders to like level up their game in like a big way. Um, yeah. Are there like, yeah, individuals in the cohorts that are actively looking for jobs? Like, like if I'm looking to hire someone is like the community collective, the place to go for hiring for positions where, how does that fit in? Yeah. 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 It's a great, great question. And thanks for coming Edwin. Um, so for, um, finding talent. So yeah, something that we've found, um, is that because we've built a community builders, a community of community builders across Australia and New Zealand, um, a lot of, like businesses have approached us saying, hey, we're like hiring a community manager. Do you know anyone? And like members of our community have also said like, hey, like I'm like, I just got made redundant from my role or like, you know, I'm like ready for the next opportunity. Like, do you know of anything? So um, yes, we do help um, people hire. Um, and so I've just shared a link in the chat there. We have a, uh, a form that you can just fill out and you just submit the job or the role, you know, we could help um, communities find ambassadors as well. I mean, community builders are fantastic ambassadors um, as well. So uh, we basically have, yeah, like a, an array of packages in which we can help. Um, we have like a newsletter that goes out to over a thousand people um, with like job opportunities. And then we also do like curated introductions. So I personally go through like all of our community. We have a, a talent collective as well, where we've built a group of people who are like actively looking and open for new opportunities. And so we do a lot of um, introductions and, and basically matching on that front as well. So yeah, if you've got a role uh, and you're looking for someone, just um, go to the jobs page and submit it and then I'll reach out to you directly. Cool. Thanks. That's all right. Okay. I think um, that's it for the Q and a um, thank yep. you so much again for having me and over to you, Alex. Thank you so much. Um, I just want to thank everyone who joined today. Uh, and of course, all of the ones that just left. Um, I also want to give a shout out to Thredo for saving us time and automating all the processes so we can really focus on this 
great community experience. And of course, thanks to Butter. Paz, you were awesome, awesome. Thank you so much. I learned a lot. I'm sure everyone else did too. Um, I'm sure she will not mind, um, you know, talking through, through LinkedIn or any other platform. Uh, you guys check out her website as well. And hopefully we'll see each other again at another, another event. Amazing. Thank you so much, everyone. And have a good day. Thank you. Bye. Awesome. Cheers. Thank you.